The cost-benefit analysis has been used for a long time for decision-making, for example for decisions regarding the construction of roads. Using the cost-benefit analysis, the benefits are compared with the costs. Benefits could be, for example, safer and faster transportation. Costs could be costs of constructing the road, increased emissions and a negative effect on landscape aesthetics. All costs and benefits are expressed in monetary terms so that they can be compared. If the benefits are greater than the costs, the road is considered to be something good for society and it should be built. However, if the costs are greater than the benefits, the road should not be built. The principles are the same in healthcare. The benefits of a treatment or a health program are compared to the costs. The benefits could be, for example, fewer future hospitalizations, increased longevity and increased quality of life. The cost is most often the cost of the treatment or health program itself. The problem is, how do we put a price on additional years of life and increased quality of life? Since it's controversial to express health in monetary terms, slightly different analysis than the cost-benefit analysis is used in healthcare. One kind of analysis is the cost minimization analysis. A cost minimization analysis only looks at used resources, at costs, and ignores health effects such as life years gained and increased quality of life. Benefits included could be savings from lower future burden of disease, such as fewer future hospitalizations. The cost could be the cost of the treatment. If the cost of the treatment is compensated for by future savings, the treatment is said to be cost-saving. This means that implementing the treatment would result in more money. Most treatments, however, won't be cost-saving, but they could be worth implementing anyway if they result in good health effects, for example, extra life years or increased well-being among the patients. A cost minimization analysis does not tell us anything about this. Another kind of analysis is the cost-effectiveness analysis. A cost-effectiveness analysis includes both costs and effects. Benefits are now not only savings from lower future disease burden, such as fewer future hospitalizations, but also positive health effects, such as increased years of life lived, more pain-free days, and so on. A difference from a cost-benefit analysis is that the health effects are not expressed in monetary terms. Instead, they are kept in their unit throughout the analysis, and the results from the analysis are expressed as costs per life year gained, costs per pain-free day, etc. A third kind of analysis is the cost-utility analysis. It's actually just a special case of the cost-effectiveness analysis. A cost-utility analysis includes both costs and health effects, just as a normal cost-effectiveness analysis. But the effect measure has to be expressed in qualis in this analysis. Quali stands for quality adjusted life years and considers both extra years of life and increased quality of life resulting from a treatment. A cost utility analysis is thus a kind of cost effectiveness analysis since both costs and effects are considered. What is special is that both effects on longevity and on quality of life should be considered, which they are in the health effect measure qualis. The results are expressed as costs per quality.